Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to introduce formulas involving polygons. Let's take a look at this table, and we're going to complete this as we go through it. We've got some headings here. We've got some names of polygons and their corresponding number of sides and vertices. You will have to memorize the, the names and the number of sides and vertices of the items in this particular table. Well, the rest of it you won't have to memorize. So we've got some columns here, the name of each, the number of sides and vertices in each polygon, and the number of quote-unquote triangles that can be formed by some non-overlapping diagonals. The sum of the interior angles of that polygon, so the interior angles, the ones on the inside, and the sum of the exterior angles. So adding up all each interior angle and adding up each exterior angle. So let's take a look at the triangle. We know a triangle has three sides, and you can only form one triangle with a triangle. It doesn't have any diagonals. And the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180, and the sum of the exterior angles of a triangle is 360. Um, and we can see that no matter what kind of triangle we have, if we have a right triangle, say with angles 30 and 60, then the exterior angles of that triangle are 90 and, pardon me, yep, 90 and 150 and 120, and that should all add up. So even if that's a you know, 45, 45, 90, or an equilateral triangle, each angle is 60, then we know each exterior angle is 120, and there's three of those, so that's 360. So the sum of the exterior angles of any kind of triangle is going to be 360 degrees. Now quadrilateral. That has four sides, and it can form two different triangles inside a quadrilateral. Okay, so I've got something that looks like a rectangle here. I draw one diagonal because I can't have over overlapping diagonals, and I know that each of those two triangles is going to be 180 degrees. So and that's all I can really have. The only number of triangles I can have with non-overlapping diagonals. So I get two triangles. I have to multiply that by 180. So I get the sum of the interior angles of any quadrilateral is 360. And as it turns out, the exterior angles, well, that's also 360 degrees. That's the sum of the exteriors. And then I can keep going down my chart here. So a pentagon, a pentagon, a five-sided figure, has three non-overlapping triangles. Let's take a look at that. So if I draw my pentagon here, and I'll cut it up into triangles, that's all I can really do. So now I have three triangles. The sum of each one of those triangles is 180 degrees. So three times 180 equals 540 degrees. And you might be able to tell here from my chart, no matter how many sides it has, it appears that the sum of the exterior angles of every polygon is going to be 360. So you may also notice up at this point that the number of triangles is always two fewer than the number of sides. So I went 3 minus 2 is 1, 4 minus 2 is 2, 5 minus 2 is 3, 6 minus 2 is 4. So in a hexagon, if I multiply my four triangles, I get 720 degrees. So a heptagon has five overlapping triangles times 180 equals 900. 
1,500. And of course, the sum of the exterior angles is 360. So an octagon, I subtract two, I get six overlapping triangles times 180 degrees. The sum of the interior angles is 1,080. The sum of the exteriors is 360. A nonagon, a nine-sided figure, I subtract two from the number of sides and vertices. That gives me the number of triangles I can form. So now I have seven triangles inside my nine-sided figure. I multiply that times 180, and I get the sum of the interior angles of that particular triangle. That's Twelve hundred sixty degrees. Hopefully, my arithmetic's right there. So, decagon, eight triangles times one hundred and eighty, one thousand four hundred and forty degrees for the sum of the interior angles, and of course, three sixty for the sum of the exterior angles, and so forth. So, the dodecagon must have ten triangles times 180 degrees, 1800 degrees for the sum of the interiors, sum of the exteriors is 360. And the pentadecagon, 15-sided figure, has 13 triangles times 180. I will let you figure that one out. You can bring that to class for me. So let's take a look now at our formulas. Of Apparently, well, let's look at the n-gon. An n-gon is we don't know how many sides that has. So it has n number of sides. So what would be the number of triangles? What would go in this particular spot? Well, that is n minus 2. So then the sum of the interior angles must be 180 times n minus 2. So our formula for the sum of the interior angles of any polygon is 180 times n minus 2. And of course the sum of the exterior angles is always going to be 360. That's about as easy a formula as you're going to get. So those are a couple of the formulas you will need to memorize. The third one I'll do without proof is the formula for the number of diagonals that can be drawn in a polygon of n sides. So n is the number of sides, our diagonals, the number of diagonals is n times n minus 3 all over 2. So we'll do a couple sample problems here. We want to calculate the number of diagonals that can be drawn in a pentadecagon. Well, a pentadecagon, you're going to have to know that vocabulary. That is a figure with 15 sides. So then our diagonals must equal 15 times 15 minus 3 all over 2. So the number of diagonals, 15 times 12 over 2. I'll simplify my 12 and 2 to be 6. So the diagonals is 15 times 6, or there must be 90 diagonals in a pentadecagon. So memorizing that formula is a lot easier than trying to draw all those diagonals in. Let's take a look at another question here. A polygon has 14 diagonals. Use the formula to calculate the number of sides and name the polygon. So our D here is 14. So we have 14 equals N times N minus 3 all over 2. And our goal is to solve for N. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to get that uh, 2 out of the denominator. So I get 28 equals N times N minus 3. And I'm going to distribute the N 
which is going to give me n squared, which means I'm going to have to factor. So I get 28 equals n squared minus 3n. I'll subtract 28 from both sides, because if I want to factor, I have to set my equation equal to 0. n squared minus 3n minus 28 equals 0. And in factoring, I get 0 equals n. n and n are my factors of n squared, so I need factors of negative 28 that add up to negative 3. And 4 times 7 is 28, and they are 3 apart. So we get n plus 4 times n minus 7, and we get n equals negative 4, and n equals 7. Well, we can't have a negative number of sides, so we can discount that. And a seven-sided figure is a heptagon. So we have answered our question. Seven sides, heptagon, and there's some practice with the diagonal formulas, and you'll get some more practice with the sum of the interior and exterior angle formulas when I see you in class.